Ladies and gents, this is the moment you waited for. Teaching a lesson about ceramic capacitor. Always can be seen at every motherboard. Teaching your head, filling your minds. No one in here will be left behind. Hello everyone, I'm Adrian Sirai, a first-year engineering student from Rogationist College, the home of the Blue Phoenix. In this video, we will talk about ceramic capacitors and how is it made. But first, I will tell you some history about ceramics. Ceramics is one of the most ancient industries going back thousands of years. Once humans discovered that clay could be found in abundance and formed into objects by first mixing with water and then firing, a key industry was born. The oldest known ceramic artifact is dated as early as 28,000 BCE. During the late Paleolithic period, it is a statuette of a woman named the Venus of Dolni Viestunice from a small prehistoric settlement near Brno in the Czech Republic. In this location, hundreds of clay figurines representing Ice Age animals were also uncovered near the remains of a horseshoe-shaped kiln. It is really helpful from the society, from making artifacts, to containers for waters and food, producing of ceramics by the use of the wheel, for decorations, a kiln, blast furnaces, and many more. After World War II, Ceramics and glass have contributed to the growth of many technologically advanced fields, including electronics, optoelectronics, medical, energy, automotive, aerospace, and space exploration. In addition, innovations in ceramic processing and characterization techniques have enabled the creation of materials with tailored properties that meet the requirements of specific and customized applications. In recent years, ceramic processing has gained new vigor from nanotechnology, which is allowing manufacturers to introduce materials and products with unconventional properties, such as transparent ceramics, ductile ceramics, and microscopic capacitors. Now, going back to our ceramic capacitors, let's tackle first what is a ceramic capacitor and how capacitor works. This is how ceramic capacitor look like. It is a disc shape, has two threads, and it's non-polarized. This is the parts of the capacitor, the protective coating, the connecting wire, the electrode, and the dielectric ceramic disc. Its capacitance can vary from 0.01 microfarad to 1 farad. A capacitor stores electric charge just like a battery, but it doesn't really work like a battery. It can be seen in most of all the motherboards. And now, we will be discussing about how ceramic capacitors are manufactured. This video is from Kemet Electronics. It begins by producing ceramic sheets that is used as dielectric materials in the ceramic capacitor. Ceramic powders are mixed in the dispersing agents to make slurry. The slurry is then milled to stringent process specification. The slip is filtered and precisely coated to a carrier film then dried, labeled with a manufacturing number to ensure traceability and sent to the screen printing process. The electrode printing process provides the internal electrodes of the multi-layered ceramic capacitor. This operation is performed in a class 10,000 clean room environments. The electrode ink is used to produce the electrode pattern. A barcoded run sheet is issued to the production floor to ensure that the proper material is received. The internal electrodes are screen printed onto the ceramic tape. The precisely patterned screen is used on the roll screen printer to print the electrodes onto the ceramic tape. The roll screen printer D reels the black ceramic tape, prints the electrode pattern, and dries it then re-reels the printed sheet. The printed ceramic tape is then stacked in an alternating manner to produce the multi-layer structure. The chip build-up operation is also performed in a clean environment. Reels of blank ceramic tape are first laminated 
together to provide the bottom cover layer. Printed tape layers are precisely stacked and laminated to create the active portion of the multi-layer structure. Then, more blank tape layers are added to produce the top cover layer. Each electrode layer is aligned using an exclusive computer-controlled fission alignment system. Each pad contains thousands of individual chips. The batch ticket remains with the batch throughout the process and is tracked using CHEM, its exclusive manufacturing execution system. The pad cutter cuts the multi-layer pad into thousands of individual green ceramic chip capacitors. The separated green capacitor chips are sent through a bake out process to remove organic materials introduced in the earlier process step. Green ceramic chips are loaded into centers which are then loaded into a baked out card. The chips are baked out with precisely controlled time and temperature profile. After baked out, the chips are fired in either a batch kiln or a pusher kiln. The previously loaded centers are removed from the baked out cards and loaded into the firing kilns. During firing densification of the chip occurs the volume of each chip is reduced approximately 50% and then fired chip is now strong and dense. Corner rounding process smoothens the chip surface and rounds off sharp corners to reduce the possibility of chipping or breaking the corners of the chip. Chips are loaded into a bowl with a mixture of water, alumina powder, and media. Chips are unloaded from the bowls, rinse, and dry. The chips are then separated from the media. The external electrode or termination is now applied to allow electrical connection of the device to the circuit. Corner rounded chips are loaded into the carrier. Plates precisely aligned pins are used to push one end of each chip in the corner plate out an exact amount to expose it for the dipping process. The exposed ends are dipped into precisely metered paste with a computer-controlled terminator. The chips and termination plate are then dried in a computer-controlled drying oven, and then the other end of the chip is then exposed, dipped, and dried. The chips are then removed from the carrier plates, load it into mesh firing baskets, and fired in a multi-zone built furnace. Copper termination is used for base metal electrode product and inspired a controlled nitrogen atmosphere. The terminated chips are then electroplated with a nickel barrier layer followed by an electroplating 10 layer. Chips are plated using either an automatic barrel plating process or a tariff flow through platter. The automatic barrel plating line is a cautious operation which is computer controlled and capable of processing a variety of chip sizes simultaneously. Chips are loaded into plating barrels with conductive media and plated in the auto line after plating. The chips and media are removed, dried, and separated. Each batch is tested for solder ability to ensure quality. The chips are then 100% tested using state-of-the-art computer-controlled sorting equipment. Each chip is tested to ensure that capacitance, dissipation factor, insulation, resistance, and dielectric withstanding voltage are within stringent specifications. Any chip not meeting these limits is removed from the batch. The capacitors are now ready for packaging. During the packaging process, an additional capacitance and dissipation factor test is performed to further ensure quality as well as error-free packaging. And that's all for the ceramic capacitors. I am Adrian Sirai from the First Year Electronics Engineering. Thank you very much.